Hello everybody and welcome. As an exception, today I will be working on my work computer, which is a Mac. So I'm not really very impressed by Mac, that's just my opinion. But the most important thing is that it will run Inkscape. And as you can see, it runs Inkscape just fine. In this video, I will be showing you how to draw 3D objects like this one. What we see here is, technically speaking, an isometric projection of a 3D object. Roughly speaking, what is that an isometric projection? It's what 3D objects look like when you don't take into account the fact that things look smaller when they are further away. Isometric projection is used a lot for making technical drawings as well as for a lot of computer games like, for example, Baldur's Gate. Uh, so, let's get started. The first thing we are going to do is set up an axonometric grid. If you are interested in grids, then you can check out this video for more information about rectangular grids, guides and snaps. We go to File, File, Document Properties and we click on the Grids tab and we select Axonometric grid and click on new. As you can see, three sets of grid lines appear. One set of vertical lines and two sets at 30 degrees from the horizontal. We can change the angle using these two. For example, if I set the angle x to zero, I have a horizontal set of grid lines and a vertical set of grid lines and one set of grid lines at 30 degrees. If I set this to 45 degrees, this third set of grid lines changes. An isometric projection is an example of an axonometric projection, but the angles X and Z have to be both 30 degrees. So this, the settings as they are like this, a result in an isometric grid. grid. So the first thing I do is I close the document properties and I enable snap settings up here. I make sure that uh, snap nodes, paths and handles are set as well as snap to grids are set. Let's have a look at the grid lines which we created. We can imagine three separate three grid lines here, three planes here. I'm going to draw a uh, three, the three faces of the cube in the plane. I'm going to make the first, first I'm going to make the front face, which is three, six units high. And six units wide. The next face will also be six units wide and six units high. That's the side face of the cube. And the top will also be six units wide and six units high. Uh, six units in breadth. Next, using the selection tool and the fill and stroke dialog, I'm going to set the color of each cubes. I'm going to make the top face light gray, the side face a bit darker, and the front face darker still. The last step, I will draw a circular hole in the side face. When you project a circle onto an isometric plane, you get an ellipse. There are different ways to figure out the dimensions and the orientation of this ellipse. Here I'm going to show you how you can draw the ellipse using only tools in Inkscape. We are going to start by drawing a circle with a diameter of 30 millimeters. I hold Ctrl to make 
the aspect ratio of the width and the height stay constant and I select it. I make sure I have millimeters selected here and I lock the width and the height ratio and I set it to exactly 30 millimeters. Next I move the circle to align it with the cube and I'm going to compress my circle to turn it into an ellipse and I make sure that the width of the ellipse coincides with the width of the distance between these two lines. Next we are going to change the location of the center of rotation of the circle and I move it to the top left corner of, the, of this bounding box. I'm gonna shear the circle after that until it fills the square perfectly. After that I'm gonna move the uh, center back, the center of rotation back to the center of the ellipse. And finally I'm going to scale it but I'm going to hold shift and control while scaling it and I want to make the circle so that there's only one unit between the circle and the edge of the square. And finally we are going to fill the circle with a gradient. Let's modify the gradient. First of all I'm going to remove the transparency on the right edge of the gradient and I'm going to change the direction of the gradient as well. Now here is the top side of the circle and I would like that to be in the shade so I'm going to make that dark. I select it and I use the eyedropper tool to make it just as dark as the front face and I'm going to select this bottom side that will be in the light. The light is somewhere above the cube and I'm going to select the top side of the cube. Maybe I'm just going to make it just a little bit darker after all in the top, like so. And as a absolutely last step, I'm going to select the entire cube and I'm going to get rid of this stroke. And there you have it. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, uh, consider giving it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe if you like. And if there's any topic you would like me to cover or if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. Bye bye.